I of newt twig of tree reveal the VCG. Hello everybody, I'm Nick the Naval Architect. After you complete the stability test, we break out the black magic. The stars align, we consult the oracle, and interpret the portents to convert the test data into the light chip. Well, that was dramatic. <laughs> Clearly, the actual math involves a far more mundane process. But it does make you wonder. What science could possibly link moving a few weights on deck with calculating the light chip weight? Today, I explain some of the theory behind the stability test. Now, a disclaimer here. This video provides the broad overview of the calculations and theory for a stability test. But I'm not showing the full mathematics, and I'm not giving you the full step-by-step -step process, partly to protect the DMS competitive advantage. You don't expect me to give you all my secrets. Before we dive into this process, what is our goal? Well, we want to calculate four critical numbers for the vessel lightship. The weight, the longitudinal center of gravity, transverse center of gravity, and vertical center of gravity. These four numbers completely define the vessel weight properties. First, we calculate this information for the vessel as inclined, meaning what we have on the day of the test. This includes the lightship plus everything that should not be there. And then we correct for the extra items like the dead weight, test equipment, people on board, etc. Now, one of the major tools for our lightship calculation is a stability model. In the old days, anything involving hydrostatics or vessel stability required hand calculations and integrations along the lines plan using something called Banjang curves and Simpson's rule integrations. These were really cumbersome and laborious. I had to do it once in school. Only once. <laughs> Thanks to computer technology, we have a better method. We construct a 3D stability model from the lines plan. This contains a 3D definition of the hull shape, all contained within the stability analysis software. The software performs those same integrations that I mentioned before, but it does it infinitely faster. Once the computer was able to deliver these super fast calculations, we started asking for better resolution, better accuracy, and the computers delivered. They were able to easily amp up their game. As a result, the modern stability model is far superior to hand calculations in every respect. It's faster, more accurate, more detailed, you just can't beat it. Stability models have become an essential tool for the modern stability test. So the first thing we need to calculate is our weight, LCG, and TCG. This comes from the freeboard measurements. We use the freeboard measurements and the vessel drawings to calculate the draft at several locations along the vessel length. Based upon those individual sample points, we can simultaneously solve to determine the vessel's draft, trim, and heel. This completely defines the current water plane for the vessel. Once we have that current water plane, we punch that information into the stability model. It then uses interpolation with that water plane to determine what the actual water level is at each of those individual sections along the length of the hull. It then does many of the same integrations that we were doing by hand, but as I mentioned, infinitely faster. Combine that with some knowledge of the spacing and locations, and you can find out all sorts of detailed information about the ship. This is really where the stability model saves us time. In the old days, like I said, this would take several weeks. Stability model does this instantly, calculating the vessel's hydrostatics, and it reports the resulting displacement, longitudinal center of buoyancy, and transverse center of buoyancy to match the defined water plane. Now we use a little bit of physics knowledge. When the vessel is sitting in equilibrium, we know that weight has to equal displacement. We know that LCG, that is longitudinal center of gravity, has to equal the LCB, the center of buoyancy, and then the same for TCG has to equal the TCB. Cent transverse gravity has to equal transverse buoyancy. As a result, those hydrostatic properties tell us of the three properties that we want to know, weight, LCG, and TCG. 
Speaking of fast calculations, did you know that you can hire DMS to perform stability tests for you? We offer a host of services including deadweight survey, lightweight survey, stability test, and incline experiment. And we offer a very unique fast turnaround. Most people, when the test is done, the first thing they want to know, did I pass or fail? You know, what are the results? We give you preliminary results on the day of the test. Right there, right then, you have your first cut indication. We then go away, do our quality control, and within a few days, you have the full stability test report. Fast turnaround, easier stability test. That is what you can get when you hire DMS. So check out our website to find out how we can help you on your next project. Getting back to our stability calculations. We still need one last piece of information, the VCG, vertical center of gravity. This is also the most critical piece of information, and it won't come easily. It's going to take some extensive effort to get the VCG. This requires a two-step process. First, we calculate the GMT, and then second, we use that GMT to calculate the VCG. GMT starts with the metacentric height. The metacentric height stands for an imaginary pivot point. As the ship heels over, the center of buoyancy shifts because the underwater shape changes. If you imagine that center of buoyancy swinging like a pendulum on an imaginary string, the pivot point would be the metacenter. And GMT is the vertical distance from the metacenter to the VCG. That's shown as point G on your figure. So how do we determine the GMT from the incline experiment? Well, first I need to talk about the physical meaning of GMT. Imagine the ship is acting like a giant spring. As you heel it over to greater angles, the healing moment slowly increases. Well, we can imagine that the change of that healing moment probably is not the same for every ship. There's probably some sort of measurement for how strong or weak that healing moment is. If the ship were a spring, the GMT would be the spring rate. That is our measure for how quickly the healing moment increases as the ship heals over. That analogy is important because at small heel angles, this analogy matches real life. The ship demonstrates a very predictable and linear response as it heals over. That is good. Linear responses mean easily detectable patterns. This is the goal of the incline experiment. Calculate the GMT. GMT comes from the relation between an applied healing moment and the heel angle. So we need to measure those two values. By moving weights to different transverse positions on the deck, we create a known healing moment. And because we're just shifting positions, we're creating that healing moment without changing the total weight of the vessel. This is fundamental to the entire stability test and the underlying theory. So that's one half of GMT. We have moved the weights and the vessel heals over. We now very, very accurately measure the heel angle. And the most popular tool to do that is a pendulum. We like pendulums because they can be constructed on site and adapted to each situation. Despite their simple construction, Pendulums can easily measure with an accuracy of around 0.01 degrees or smaller. Pretty impressive, huh? We have now measured our heel angle. That gives us the other half of GMT. You combine the heel moment and the heel angle, and you can produce a plot like this. This is commonly called the tangent plot. Everything builds to this tangent plot. The whole goal was to get a clear line on this tangent plot because the slope of that line directly correlates with the GMT. If you know the slope of the line, you can calculate the GMT. Great, we got the GMT. We're on to step two, getting the VCG. Fortunately, there is a very simple relation between GMT and VCG. That equation is shown on your screen. VCG equals KB plus BMT minus GMT minus free surface correction, FSC. Okay, I threw a few unknown words at you there, so let's give some background information. We can determine the KB and the BMT strictly from the geometry of the hull shape and the current vessel water plane. The free surface correction, that is FSC, adjusts for any slack tanks currently in the vessel. 
The incline experiment just gave us the GMT. That provides us all the missing pieces of the puzzle. We have four variables on the right, and we know the numbers for each one of those variables. This gives us the all-important value for the vertical center of gravity. We finally have our VCG. Time to remove the dead weight. So far, we have calculated a reliable number for the current weight and center of gravity of the vessel. However, that's not the true light ship. We are stuck with the as inclined condition, and that includes many unwanted weights in the vessel. We have the dead weight items, the incline equipment, the incline weights, the tank contents. They all have to go. This is where the dead weight survey and the tank survey come in. Before the incline experiment, all of these items were meticulously detailed and tallied up. We know the weight and location for all of these outstanding items. Now we simply apply now we apply simple weight moment calculations to remove all of those unwanted items on paper. No physical movement involved, this is all just math. So how did we do it? First step was to build our major tool, the stability model. Once that was done, we used the freeboard measurement with the stability model. That gave us the weight, LCG, and TCG. Then we went on to use the incline experiment to get our GMT. Throw in some more fancy math and a little bit more data from the stability model, and we get the VCG. But we're not done yet. We remove all the dead weight, and that finally gets us to the important point. The light ship weight and associated center of gravity. You know, I think this is pretty impressive. I mean, moving concrete blocks across the deck of a ship, that doesn't seem very glamorous. It certainly fails to indicate the precise nature of a stability test. If you went by one day and saw people heaving concrete blocks along, you wouldn't think, oh, that's a fine, precise scientific experiment there. And that's what I love about stability tests. We don't require fancy equipment or expensive testing facilities. All we require is a little knowledge about the ship. Armed with that knowledge, we carefully exploit physics to achieve high quality science without the fancy equipment. Now that's efficient. Thanks very much. I am Nick the Naval Architect. You know, it's not magic, it's science. And DMS is here to bring some science to your next ship project. Whether that's stability analysis, ship structures, or stability tests, check out the website to find out how I can make your next project easy. Thanks very much.